Hey everyone, what's up? Happy holidays. This is Uri from Gorilla Poker. In this video, we're going to have two parts. Part one is going to be high stakes hand history review, and part two is going to be a short live play at 200 zoom, which I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the hand is played between Viktor Kudinov and Linuslav, Linus Lolliger. Victor has recently been battling non-stop 24-7, just drag battling it up, doing very, very well, and it certainly feels like we have a new contender to the throne. It's not often that someone's just willing to sit and battle heads up or three-handed against any lineup. So Victor definitely trying to establish himself as the top dog or one of the top dogs. And yeah, this hand is played at 100, 200, BVB, Linus limps, Victor raises 3x to $600, Linus calls, and we get a 736 two tone board. Always good to think about these boards a little bit, and here every little nuance matters, right? Because the bigger Victor isolates, the less low cards Linus can call with. And given Victor isolated rather small, there is actually a very reasonable chance Linus gets here with hands like, you know, 10, 8 offsuit, 6, 7 offsuit, maybe 4, 5 offsuit even. And had Victor isolated to 4x or 5x, these hands become less present in the offsuit versions, and then the entire dynamic of how hard Linus can hit the board changes. Victor's range to isolate is always going to be a bit polar. It's going to have very strong hands and very weak hands. So he can definitely both hit and miss this board completely. But in a classic way, the low boards are good for the caller more than the raiser. So check. Victor bets roughly two-thirds pot, indicating, you know, of course he can't bet everything. Board's kind of low and connected, so he wants a bet that can actually deny some equity from some of Linus's hands. Linus makes the call. Turn nine of spades. Again, very connecting card. It's good for Linus's range in the sense that Victor's advantage preflop comes from hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, and those hands just got worse when the board connected. So Victor would much rather turn it been a jack, queen, king, ace in terms of range versus range. But yeah, goes check, check. Get to the river, river, king of spades, and Linus makes a small quarter pot bet. The idea of this bet is that if Linus has a 7 or a 9 or maybe a good 6, these hands are good enough to put more money in, even on the king, but they can't put a large bet in. Because if you put a large bet in, you narrow down Victor's range to having more kings calling you down, and then the, the bets are not really value bets anymore. But the hands are good enough for a small bet, and there are plenty of hands like these in Linus's range, so the small bet makes sense in this situation. A lot of players who are not familiar with the strategy would just check with a 7 or a 9 because they're scared of the king. But rather than check, throwing out a small bet is actually a, a very clean, very superior play. So yeah, Linus bets and Victor puts in a rather large raise, right? This is like a 7x raise. Now when we think about Victor's range, can a king put in such a large raise? Uh, so... Victor is probably raising some of his kings and not all of them. If he would raise all of them, Linus would bet small with all of his nutted hands and always get raised by a king. So Victor would mix raising with kings. I don't know if this sizing is, is one for a king. This might be one for an even bigger hand. And bigger hands for Victor would be, I think, mostly two pairs, right? Maybe aces, but then, you know, king three, king six, king seven. King nine, if he didn't barrel king nine, would be the the better than one pair hands that improve. And maybe I'm wrong, and the size is fine for a king. Either way, Victor raises, Linus goes into the time bank and rips it in for his entire stack. And what Linus is saying here is, you know, I bet small with all my weak hands, but I'm also throwing in some knotted stuff here that I have and you don't. Biggest example would be 10-8. Victor is going to barrel all of his nut straights on a turn maybe something like 4 or 5, something like a set. So Linus could have all of those more so than Victor. And then he'd bet small, Victor would raise thin, and Linus would go all in. So this is a story Linus is telling. Of course he could have 
infinite bluffs as well and it's up to him to manage his frequencies in a way where it's not face up for Victor Wall to do. And the only thing Victor needs to assess is what is the value threshold, like what is the weakest hand Linus would do this with for value. This is a very nuanced question. Is, you know, Victor's size, does it fit one pair? And can Linus just go all in with something like king three, king six, seven, nine, some hand like two pair? Or does it fit more two pair? And then Linus would need something like king nine, king seven to justify going all in. So he beats enough of Victor's range. Certainly if Linus had king nine here, which is, you know, say king nine of diamonds, that would fit. King seven, probably good enough to go all in as well. King six, questionable, but maybe, and so on and so forth. And these kind of nuances are important to pay attention to depending on your hand, right? Like if Victor has king queen, they're not very important because certainly Linus is shoving for value with better. But in this case, Victor actually has a better hand than that. He makes the call with king six and Linus shows down seven, eight for the bet three bet bluff. Now let's review the hand from both players' perspectives. So Linus Lim calls a 7-8, check calls flop, check, check, turn, lead small on the river just as he should, and he picks this combo to rip all in with the idea that the 8 is kind of a, a removal effect, right? Because maybe Victor is going to make the bet call with something like King 8. So having the 8 sharing cards with your knotted hands makes sense. I think, you know, the hand makes perfect sense from Linus's perspective. Uh, nothing unusual going on here. Very accurate. He cannot do this with every 7-8, but it, it just looks fine to me. Victor's play with king-6, you know, preflop makes sense. Flop throwing a large bet in with a king-6 sometimes seems fine. Preflop makes sense, like you see, it's, it's like a king-6 offsuit, so this is one of the trashier isolates. Not sure it's actually a very accurate one, but it, it's okay. But yeah, two-thirds bet. You want to have some of these middle pair high kicker hands in there. You are getting called by draws, and sometimes a six will pair. You'll have trips, stuff like that. Always check the turn, and probably always raise a river with two pair. And then uh, Victor's first real decision in the hand comes facing the shove. Where, like I said, he has to estimate Linus's thresholds and all these things, and, and those will determine whether King 6 is a mix between sometimes call, sometimes fold, or whether it is an always call if you think Linus is shoving King 6 himself. So now that the hand is done, I'll show you guys the new live play format, uh, which I thought would be nice to do. And the idea here is that we join four tables of Zoom. Apologies for my picture blocking out a tiny bit of one of the screens. And we will click sit out on next blind for all the tables. And we'll just go, go through like a short group of hands and talk about anything that comes up. And usually at least one or two do. Okay. So first hand we're going to play bottom right 10-8 suited. This is a hand where kind of all the options are on the table for all the options that Willem can take. You know, the kind of hand that in GTO world you want to be tricky and sometimes bet, sometimes check back. You can bet big or bet small. Pocket tens here, we face a small three bet. I think this hand likes to call here, not really four bet. And 10-8, I think, is actually a really strong hand to keep barreling. There's a very reasonable chance our opponent would have check-raised with over pair, so we just have a very strong hand at that point. Uh, and tense here when our opponent checks, I want to just start building the pot. Hopefully against ace-king, ace-queen, something like that. King of clubs on the river. You know, it doesn't improve my opponent a ton, but certainly enough where I'm not going to be betting 10-8. He could just make random two pairs. He could improve with a with a flush draw. All these things are, are possible. So you always check back. And yeah, we run into the King Jack, where if we were to review this specific hand, I'd say it was not very well played. Throw the replayer here and look at it in a second. Sevens here is probably mostly a fold. Thinking against this three bet size just because of the rake structure. It 
higher stakes you get to call it. And yet the idea here is, you know, when you're checking Jack on 649, certainly you want to check all, but you have to be sensitive to my bet size. And, and when I bet 75% pot, this hand should just fold flop. Similarly, you know, you can call turn with a hand like two overs and a gut shot, but not when there are two flush draws and a straight present, which devalue all the routes. So he should fold turn and yeah, bank the river, but... I think we played our hand really well, got a large amount of value. And this guy is probably not a full-time player, at least not a full-time online player, given both that hand and this hand where we see him cold call a three bet out of position, which is usually the sign of, of a recreational or a, a live player who's used to, to different types of games. Yeah, we'll fold here and see if anything interesting comes up. Very, very large. 4-bet from Popeye because of all the players involved and ace-jack-6 and we hold an ace and a jack. But just to take you guys through this, so extremely good board for the 4-better. He gets to bet probably everything or almost everything. Yeah, looks like we have ace-queen versus ace-king. We would have won with ace-jack here, but of course we have no business in a flop. And yeah, ace-queen is a very often 4-bet bluff hand. And after you 4-bet it, I think this board you always see better. And whether or not you call the shove, I think you probably have to in theory, and I'm not sure it works out very well in practice, is, is what I have to say about that. But yeah, interesting hand to watch. Me and Jerry's shoes, I would just have called for bet the ace king, and then everyone else would have folded, and the hand would have ended there. But definitely ended up better for him, given everything. Probably have one or two hands, and we'll wrap up the video can't call this in these positions. I think this is more of a cutoff. Like if you open cutoff, you can continue this hand, but not earlier positions. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the hand review and maybe the short live play. I like the pace we get to discuss hands in depth without needing to rush through anything and, and get tiny samples of stuff in. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.